Hey folks, Sylvia's here. Um, we're in uh, this game. Is there an option for full screen? Uh, <laughs> maybe? Full screen, I'm already apparently in full screen. Okay, well there you go. So yeah, we're continuing. Yes. Actually, I want to switch, um, go back in my settings. Ah! Um... Where is... Am I seeing previous page? Key configuration. Keyboard. I want to actually... Yeah, there we go. There we go. End. Confirm changes. Okay. So... Okay. I think I got this under control. Yeah, okay. So I can play, although I like that the, um, the mouse makes me go faster now. Alright, cool. I set up my gamepad that I normally use for DDO and for, um, the other game, <laughs> Tibia, to be an option. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how well that works. Geo panels, interesting. These are geographic features that are attuned to the elements of the universe. Real quick, by the way, we're finishing up the tutorial, in case that wasn't obvious. Crystallization of those elements results in geo symbols, like this one right here. Well, that doesn't explain anything, so let me clarify a few things. Tutorial, geo effects. Let me explain, geo effects, a system which will heavily influence battle. Take a good look at the colored panels on the area map. Do -do. Notice that enemy boost plus 50% is displayed on the top of the screen. Right there. <laughs> this means that when an enemy is on a blue panel, his or her attack and defense will be powered up by 50%. Um, she says it's just attack and defense. I think it's also hit and um, also like magical resistance. This is not good for you, so it's wise to get rid of this effect. You might be wondering, where does it come from in the first place? Why, right, looky here, I just found an object labeled Enemy Boost on this blue panel. This guy's the culprit. How obvious was that? The object is called a Geo Symbol, and as long as it's on colored panel, all panels of the same color will be affected. Let's toss it somewhere. Do do lift throw. The effect enemy boost is no longer on any of the blue panels, but Huh? The geo symbol is now affecting the red panels. That doesn't change much. Hmm, let's just destroy it then. Laharl normally can't move and just do this while enemies are still there, but whatever. Oh, before we do that, do you see the blue square, two blue square displayed on the Geo Symbol status window? Remember that. Right there. Now it's time to attack. Go ahead, Prince. Now all of them are blue. Huh? The red panels are now blue. Remember the two blue in the status window? This is what it was referring to. Destroying a blue geo symbol will turn all panels, which are of the same color as the one it was on, to blue. Damage will be dealt to anybody standing on one of those panels at the time, so be sure to take that into consideration. No damage will be dealt if you destroy a blue geo panel on a blue panel, because no panels will change color either. You can build up your bonus gauges by changing the color of geo panels. If you're able to use what you've learned to destroy all the geo panels, then you will receive a panel termination bonus. All this relates to a term I used before, geo effects. That's pretty complicated. You're right, it is. It might be a good idea to start off by destroying only the harmful geo symbols. Nullifying all of the panels is for experts who understand the concept of geo effects completely, and you're not one of them. What you say? Not all geo symbols have negative effects. When you get a chance, you should try to take advantage of the useful ones. Lastly, press the 7 button to display the geo panels on and off. That's actually one of the buttons I didn't set to anything. Now, if you see here, trying to move both the mouse and the other thing at the same time is kind of weird. Is there like, okay, I can click and track. There we go. 
So on this map, we've got three effects. A blue one, a yellow one, and a uh, nullified one. Um, the blue effect coming from the, uh, the null one is defense 50. So that's just increasing your defense. I think it also increases your resistance. I honestly don't know that. Um, the red tiles, however, have um, EXP 50% and health 50%. So increase, sorry, not like half. Um, so anything that's killed on a red panel will give you 50% more EXP and 50% more health. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into it. I am going to give you a quick explanation of what you can do with the geopanels, alright? I think that that doesn't have a geopanel spot right there. Um, right now, we have three panels on the board, and we have two colors, red and blue. We do not have a red um, geo symbol. So, if I, for instance, pop this yellow guy, well, if I pop this one, this one nulls, so it destroys the color. So if I destroy that one, we'll lose all of our blue ones, and we'll still have red, okay? If I kill this yellow one up here, which you kind of can't see because I got it there. If I kill this yellow one, all of the red tiles will turn yellow. Even though there's not currently any yellow ones on the board, they'll turn yellow. Um, anybody standing on a yellow tile will take damage or on a red tile as they turn yellow, will take damage. That includes the blue Geo symbol. When a Geo symbol takes damage from the thing uh, changing colors, it's automatically destroyed, no matter how much HP it has. Um, so all of our red ones will turn yellow, and then this one will get destroyed. And this blue one will be destroyed and on top of a yellow one. So then all of the yellow uh, tiles will then turn blue. And then we will have a whole board of blue where everybody has defense 50. Uh, this one will not take any damage because it's not on a yellow one. It's on a blue one. And the blue ones will be... I'm sorry. The yellow ones will be turning blue, but not damaging the things that are blue. So that's what happens in that situation. Now you'll note that this block here is just randomly a different tile type and a not colored. If I destroy this blue one, all the red tiles will turn blue. This is on a, uh, this yellow guy is on a red tile, so it will turn blue and get destroyed. The whole board will be blue tiles, okay? And then they will all turn yellow, and because this one is on a blue tile, when it turns yellow, it will get destroyed, and then they will all turn null. Now let's showcase this. We'll have Laharl do it, because he's got my most attack. That's not what I want to do. What do I do? Click on him? I click on him, okay. I'm still uh, struggling with my <laughs> key configuration. Do, 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 do. The, uh, the chain hit and color combo button is like abnormally large. And it's kind of blocking up a lot of the image. You can also see it's killed the ghosts. The other guy was a higher level, so he managed to survive. He, I don't think we'll survive this, though. And by the way, when you nullify all the colors, he'll take damage from the nullification. But uh, after you nullify all the colors, it explodes, and that would deal additional damage. And you see this is filling up the bonus gauge. There we go. So with the bonus gauge filled, I got 70 XP, a common sword, a short sword, a rock fist, a village axe, and 100 health. Hmm, I'm starting to get the hang of things again. Okay then, are you ready to request some allies in the Dark Assembly? There you will get to create characters who will become your loyal pupils. Loyal pupils. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Alright, let's go. Tutorial, the Dark Assembly. Welcome to the Dark Assembly. Here you can create characters as well as submit proposals. In order to submit proposals, you have to have energy known as mana. You can gain mana by defeating enemies. If you want, you can use the mana you have right now to make a new character. A cleric might be useful for healing, while a warrior or brawler might come in handy when attacking. If Prince Laharl makes the character, they will become his loyal pupils. Manage their growth carefully. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong button. What would you like to do? Summon the Assembly. 
So, Laharl's got seven mana, Etna's got one, Red's got zero, Fabrizia has got two, and Strawberry's got one. We'll have Laharl make it, obviously. Um, we'll create a new character. So, I don't know any senators yet, because I haven't done this, so I don't have a list of them. Uh, I can create a character, I can delete a character, such as Fabrizia, Strawberry, or Red. I, of course, don't want to do that right now. Um, <clears throat> I can change the name of an NPC. Which is apparently the names of the NPCs in the, in the building, that's kind of cool. So... <laughs> Saria, I believe, is the uh, the gatekeeper, so I could change her name if I really wanted to. Uh, you can take a promotion exam, which involves fighting. Um, you can raise military funds, which requires 10 mana, and you see I don't have it. Um, so off to the right, we have my rank, my mana, how many participants will be in this, and my influence. Um, and here's a list of the people I can make. I don't have enough mana to make anything good. That's kind of annoying. I actually kind of want to not do that. Yeah, I'm not going to build that right now. Hey Prince, if you go into the hospital, you should make sure you heal everybody after a battle. Treatment may not be free, it costs hell, but please heal us too, dude. The zombie gave you 300 hell. Welcome to the other world hospital. Get treated. Laharl has taken damage. Now he's healed. Do -do. I've added Vyre's Castle to the list of available areas. It's fairly new, so I do not know how much about it. However, it is rumored that there's a very able man lives there. Hmm, what you gonna do, Prince? Should we take a peek? Definitely. I'll slaughter the master of the castle as the first step to becoming Overlord. I'm actually gonna go back into the tutorial, though, and do this practice map again. Now, this practice map is now slightly different. It's no longer giving us the EXP because they took the, um, the one off but we're still getting boosted hell. I also think, is there a... Eh, I thought there was a way to, like, go through the list of active enemies. Whatever. So basically, the goal right here, what I'm trying to accomplish, is, uh... I would just want more mana. <laughs> Laharl, attack... Trying to use my conf less mouse. The mouse is kind of strange. At least he killed it. There we go. Etna. Uh, just have Etna kill that one. Whatever. I'm trying to be like lazy about this. By the way, if for some reason I was, I was, I was pretty confident <laughs> that there were, um, got two of them attack. I was pretty confident that there was five tutorial courses, and if I had remembered that in the first video I did, I would have, um, okay, okay, I can just do it that way. Can we get him? Alright, cool. Yeah, if I remember that there was only four. Uh, I would have just done all the tutorial in the first video and not split this over too. I'm also a little saddened right now because the uh, the virus castle crap is was picked up in this video and I wanted to make the whole next one. Ah, uh, it's whatever. Execute. Oh yeah, go pretties. Frieza. Sounds like a mangling of Frieza. Wow, oh, you did four damage. Good job, man. All right, let's. Uh, well, he can only he can actually only reach one monster, so we'll have him go there. Also, by keeping all of my people in the defense ones here, I mean obviously they're gonna get the uh, boosted defense, which is great. For obvious reasons. Oh uh, yeah, two damage. Uh, and it'll also, for the most part, prevent the enemies from, uh... 
leaving themselves on anything besides the uh, the tiles. We're also going to showcase this mechanic real quick. Level up! So he's level 2 now. And we're also going to... I'm actually going to have Laharl do it too. Why not? Level up! So now he's level 3. He also has 33 HP. Attack. Move. Move. It'd be funny if I end up, like, losing because of this. <laughs> I suppose it wouldn't be cool if that happened, but whatever. Alright. Not a lot of luck with the, um... Whatchamacallsits. Alrighty. Team attacks. Also, not really just a lot of luck in general with doing damage, either. Oh, man. Oh, man, you killed my Frinny. We're gonna combine them into one super dude. This may make me lose. Like, hopefully it doesn't. Not you. You. There we go. Yeah, because now he's, you know... move. Lift. And we're gonna showcase the fact that Prinny's explode when thrown. Aw, oh, yeah. Oh. Did not realize it deals damage to people around it. That's not good. <laughs> Learning experience, people. Learning experience. Let's see how much damage. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Alright, at least we got the counterattack there. Laharl actually has it right here, it says his counter is 2, which means he can counter-attack up to twice. But, um, a normal attack counts as one of his counters, so if Laharl attacks himself, like right now... Ugh, a nick, really? Yeah, if Laharl attacks, he only has one left. Last count. Left. One counter left. Well, that worked out well. If Laharl doesn't attack... We got a common bow. Alright, let's go back. No, I don't want to skip the sword score sequence. I just want to go back. Now, summon another assembly. Arl. And everybody else can't use the assembly right now because they're dead. Create new character. Let's see. So, we have his base stats right here. His aptitudes right here, and his, uh, like, weapons aptitudes right here. So as you can see, look at this guy. He's terrible at everything besides punching people in the face. Uh, you can also see that his HP will be, like, anything that increases his HP will increase it normally. Likewise with his attack, likewise with speed and hit. But resistance, defense, and SP will be halved, and intelligence will almost be halved. It's weird to me that his, uh, intelligence is higher than his defense. Um, and then there's, like, minor variations between these. Like, she's slightly better with a spear. Basically, don't use anything unless your dude has, like, an A in it. <laughs> okay? So, it's irrelevant. Uh, but she also has resistance over intelligence, which I think is probably better. Um, uh, here we have the warriors. Also, there's... Their stats are the same. Sorry, I'm yawning. The warriors, male and female variants. The female warrior has more resistance, the male warrior has more intelligence, which I think is kind of funny again. <laughs> Whatever. The, uh, both of them are good with swords. He's also good with axes. She's good with uh, spears. These are the, uh, the red skulls. Um, all of them are the same. The difference is the type of elements they get. Fire, wind, ice. Likewise with the female versions. And the female versions are faster, whereas the male versions have higher hit. 
And then we have our clerics. Female and male variants. Again, a uh, little bit more difference here. Let's see, the male one has less HP. I guess because he's wearing barbed robes. But higher attack, but less defense, and less speed. <laughs> and more hit. Okay. Uh, and they have an S aptitude with uh, stabs. Also, so do these guys. And then we have the monster type enemies that I'm capable of creating. They use their own special monster weapons, and their stats are the same. Um, yeah, mana needed for an incompetent 10 or for 1. I want to go back and look at that one. Yeah, mana needed for an incompetent 1,326. 1,353, 1,400, yeah. And you, you see the situation there. Uh, 2,355 mana needed. Um, to make monster type enemies, you need to kill them. See where it says number of killed? The more you kill, the less mana necessary to use them. To create them, I should say. Um, so you can't really make them early on in the game, besides pretties. Pretties you can make. You can't really make these guys early on in the game, though, for that reason. Um, furthermore, they have their own set of special attacks that are unique to their race. So even though they use Ugh. The same kind of weapons. They have different attacks. Whereas, like, even though she has a aptitude of E in axes, if I still manage to get her axe mastery up, she'll be able to do the same axe special attacks as this dude. Now the question is, what do I want to make? And that is actually a rough question. What do I want to make? Ultimately, you can take ten people in the battle. Um, so... If you're looking for, like, a t dream ultimate team, you want ten people. Um, I usually do. I'm trying to think about this real quick now. Um, sometimes I don't use an axe wielder, so I use the other primary weapons. And the reason why I don't use an axe wielder is because the axes don't have any um, multiple hits. Like, they cannot, uh, like, AoE type damage, I should say. Uh... Everything else has a way to hit multiple enemies at once, besides the axe, whereas the axe deals... The axe is the paladin of this game. <laughs> like Tibia. The the axe has really high single target DPS, but can't do AoE. And the other guys with AoE set up correctly deal far more damage to multiple enemies than the axe could ever hope to do to a single. Kind of like a paladin. Um... However, there are ways around that situation. Mostly the AoE thing is for uh, leveling up. So you can have your axe person also just use like a sword or another weapon for purposes of leveling up, and that's a fine way of doing it. So we have 10 slots. I normally do... I'm actually going to do this real quick. So we're definitely doing one of those, one of those, one of those... And because I want to showcase things, we're doing one of those. So currently we're at four. Um, we're also going to use a bowman and a gunman. So we're at six. And we are going to use at least one of those. So that's seven. So we have three spots left. Um, usually I do one mage and one cleric. But the cleric has like attack magic too. So that's two right there. So we are currently at eight. And that leaves me with two additional spots. I see no reason to have a second archer or a second gunner. So we'd probably go with like another fist and another sword is probably our way of handling things. That's how we're going to handle it. So another fist and another sword. Um, and I'm not going to use any of the uh, the game characters much. So Laharl, Etna, all the other people, I'm not going to use them in my battles. Um, so in that case... <clears throat> While we're making people, there's a concept of, like, pupil and mentors. Um, I forget exactly what it does, but I know one of the things it does is it makes it easier for, um, team attacks. So we have ten people. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have one primary dude who's gonna be the first person I make. And that person's going to make three underlings, and those three underlings are gonna make three underlings, and then those three underlings are gonna make three underlings. And that'll be our ten people. So, our first person here is going to be... I could, <laughs> I'm still actually torn. I could do a mage. I don't want to do a mage, though, because I don't want... 
I don't want one of the mages to be the absolute person and the other one to not be the absolute person. So that also cuts out the sword and the fist person. So maybe the axe person should be my main one? Let's do that. Yeah, the axe person's gotta be my main one. Which means the male warrior. Um, now the only difference between incompetent and good for nothing is uh, the ability bonus points. So like, a genius gets 10 bonus ability points for 5,000 mana needed and approval if necessary. The distinguished gets 8. The skilled, if I had 200 mana, gets 6, and I don't. The average gets 3 for 50 mana, and this gets 1. The good for nothing gets a minus 5. <laughs> What do I want to name my uh, my male warrior? Sylvius. <laughs> Can I type? Ah, uh, won't let me type, really. This is actually one of those things that works better with a mouse. Uh. Sylvius is going to be an axe-wielding warrior. I should put a little heart behind my name. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put the little heart behind my name. Hold on, wait, actually. How do I delete? No, 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 no. No, I'm pushing all the wrong buttons. I'm gonna make myself as flamboyant as possible. <laughs> Bam! There's Sylvius. Done. So I had to increase one of his stats by one. Um, if I had played the other one, the, uh, the good for nothing, I would have had to decrease his stats by five. I like attack. So that's our dude right there. Wait, no. We have to go back. Did I already make him? Oh, did I already make him? Crap. Crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, alright. Well, we'll just go with that. Um, I forgot that when you unlock additional jobs, actually the job that she is, is the one that is best with the axe, I think. Um, which means Sylvius is eventually going to end up being a girl. And uh, that's a whoops moment. Uh, you know, that's whatever. Uh, we're going to check to see if Etna has a new thing in her little library real quick. I forgot she talks there. Nah, not yet? Okay. I guess when I get into the next place, she'll have it. Uh, anyway, now, people, that was that. Uh, the last thing I want to do is equip my new person. Uh, equip, Sylvius. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. That's cool. Alright. Villager's Axe. Um, we're actually going to equip Laharl with the, um, the short sword, because that is in fact better. Um, and then everything else we can kind of sell. Do, 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 sell. Yeah, we're also gonna sell all the mint guns. Is there like a sell all button? No, it's not. Alright, that's all we got? Alright. I am not at the, or no, I'm at the armor person. How much money do I have? I have a decent amount of money. Alright. What's that adding on? Ah, uh, I'm pushing all the wrong buttons. <laughs> I, think, I still don't really know what the buttons do. Okay, well I know what that button does now. What about this button? This button? That button takes me back. That one's the try on button, okay. I just, okay, I can just click over it. Coach, what's that give me? Social worker. I have no idea what social worker does. Broker and medicine man? I forget what those do either. Teacher? I don't need intelligence. Defense and psychologist? I don't know what psychologist does. Now, if you ever don't like what's here, you can just leave and come back in. But we're actually going to focus on weapons right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this lady already said this to me. Do do. We can get a sword breaker for Laharl, but we're not going to bother. We just want to get a really cool axe. You also see axes give you a reduction in hit. That's another aspect of axes, just on that there. Um, now what's this one giving me? An increase in attack and an increase in defense. 
but only plus five. That's not super great. Let's try again. And they don't even have the good axe, so let's try again. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. Battle axe. A little bit better. Much better. Much better. So that first one had a total combined value of 5. This one has a total combined value of 10. We're going to buy that one, and we're going to utilize... We were going to use utilize the try-on button, but I pushed the wrong button. Now I'm pushing the wrong buttons again. <laughs> it, it's going to take me a while to uh, figure out how to get the, the thing to work the way I want to. Try-on, there we go. And I believe we just bought it. And equipped it? I think we just did that? No! <laughs> How do I exit? Now let's see, did I do that correct? Okay, I did just equip it. Alright, cool. And we're gonna buy Sylvia Say suit of armor. And then, um, I guess the last thing will be to complete that quest, that first tutorial mission, Physicians again. What do physicians do? Physicians do resistance. Eh. What do we got here? Uh, statistician, sentry, and teacher. I think the statistician uh, increases EXP gain, which actually makes it pretty awesome, but the, the teacher is kind of a negative there, so let's try again. Bulletproof vest. What's this one? Coach, Dietitian, Sentry. That's not terrible. What about this one? Aeronaut, Manager, Social Worker. Aeronaut, I think, increases the damage of uh, air attacks, but I don't have any of those, so that serves me no real purpose. We're gonna buy this one. There we go. And we're gonna sell that Villager's Axe. And the other thing I want to do is I want to rearrange so that Sylvius, manually, is at the top. And Laharl, and then Edna. And I'm sure there was a better way for me to do that. Yeah, so we're going to do one more of that tutorial run with um, Sylvius so that he can get some experience. Although, I think we need to use the hospital. Now, which button heals all? Not that one. <laughs> I don't know what button 3 is. I'm gonna have to look at that. Hold on. Let me get into my, uh, settings. Key configure, keyboard. Next page. Alright. Menu button I have set to F1. Cancel, I'm actually going to switch to F7. Alright. Because I feel like, yeah, it should be right next to select. Menu can stay up there. Um, shift window button. I don't know what that does. I'm gonna put it there, though. Next page and previous page can be up there. Expansion button? I don't really know what it is. And we'll put that up there. Whatever. Okay. I think we got it. Maybe. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a while. Alright, do the practice map again. All heart, Sylvius. Let's see how much damage he actually does. Actually, you know what? Before Sylvius does anything, I want Sylvius to sneak EXP. So he's going to be used in, um, try to use him in team attacks with Laharl. Good all around. And we're gonna do the same with Etna. Sylvius. He was not part of the Etna team attack, that's a shame. Well, the upside though is Etna uh, thinned that one out a little bit. 
so Silvius can probably get the kill. And we're gonna have um, you pop up there, you pop up there, and I don't care, you can pop up over here. And we'll have everybody else just randomly attack too. You do get, um, your little battle gauge goes up a little bit more if you, uh, chain attacks like I'm currently doing. It's usually not really enough to, like, make a difference, but you can. See, the battle gauge went up a little bit there. You move there, I guess. Oh, one of the nice things I like about this game, too, not that it's, like, a huge deal, is, um, the weapons, like, the visuals of the weapons actually change. So you can see Laharl has a new sword now. Aw, oh, yeah, good, good job, Silvius. Um, yeah, go there. Whatever. <clears throat> Doo -doo. Nope, I don't want you to attack that one. By the way, if you tell one of your people to attack a monster that gets killed by somebody else's attack, nothing happens. Just throwing that out there. No team attack. And then leveled up. How much HP does he have? Sylvia should be able to kill him. By the way, your people can attack and move, and if they attack before moving, they can still attack afterwards. I'm pretty sure of that fact. I could be wrong, though. Not enough to get the kill. Yeah, I don't think so. So I can now move this guy out of position so that Sylvius can take his spot and smack that guy on the side of the head with an axe. Aw, oh, yeah. Aw, oh, no. <laughs> that sucked. That sucked. I'm so not happy about that situation. Hold on, I think I went... Yeah, I went Laharl to get the... To take this one, because Laharl's, I think, more likely to get a team attack with Sylvius. Because, uh... They're the mentor. Yeah, team attack 80. Be the time that I get the 20. Alright. Yeah, actually, if you look at his uh, stats, it'll say... Um, mentor, Laharl, pupils, mana, none, and then what his mana is. We should get the kill here, and I wonder if that was me getting an email or a news alert. I gotta change the, uh, the sound on my phone. There we go. Sylvia's didn't level up quite as much as I wanted, but it all worked out well. All right, folks, so that was that. Um, next time we're actually going into Virus Castle. Um, we'll get some more of the quirky humor and all that jazz of this game. But uh, for now, people, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, Twitter, Facebook. I will see you folks later. I forgot to save. <laughs> I almost closed it without saving. That would have been bad. Alright, yeah, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, Twitter, and Facebook.